my mission to inspire young people to get off the couch has led me here to Government House in Adelaide. It's the home and workplace of the Queen's representative in South Australia, our Governor. So I thought I'd try knocking on the door and seeing if Her Excellency was up for a chat to talk about all the great things that young people are already doing to get off the couch, but also to inspire other young people to get off the couch as well. So I've suited up, let's head inside. Your Excellency, hello. Hello, Ethan. Thank you for having me. Great pleasure. Come on, come on in. Thank you. It is my great pleasure to welcome Her Excellency, the Honourable Francis Adamson, AC, the Governor of South Australia. Your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure, Ethan. It really is. Thank you. Now, ma'am, you've led a, a stellar career in public service. Uh, you, you've been Australia's ambassador to China. Um, you led the Department of Foreign Affairs. How does it feel to be back home in South Australia as our governor? Look, it, it feels wonderful, I have to say. I hadn't necessarily thought beforehand how it would feel, as you say, about Rod and I and our children, our adult children, actually, uh, have all been made to feel extremely welcome. And for me, of course, it's a welcome home. And when when people come to Government House, and several thousand South Australians have since we've been here, they're always very keen to actually stop and say, welcome home. So I'm feeling very comfortable, and sometimes I feel as if I've never been away. On other days, of course, the things that I've done in the decades I was away are you know, quite relevant, and people are interested in those as well too. So I'm really enjoying all aspects of the role, whether it be the the constitutional, ceremonial community or assisting support the promotion of the state, including through some of my international uh, connections and experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's fantastic. And welcome home. It is fantastic to have um, a governor who was um, so well travelled and had such a fantastic career, but also to come back now and, uh, mm -hmm. and put those experiences into place in, in the role as governor. Mm -hmm. So um, on that topic, uh, this might be a bit of a difficult question. I never said this was going to be easy, uh, but if there, South Australia has some amazing locations um, and yeah. places to visit uh, and some picturesque places to mm -hmm. see, if you had to cut it down to two or three of your favourite places mm. in South Australia, what would they be? Mm. Look, that, that is a difficult question, and I'm not going to be deliberately difficult at this stage <laughs> of our discussion, but I, I want to slightly reframe it, because mm -hmm. of course I have places that I've been to more than any other, and there's something uh, wonderful really about being able to return over a period of, of time. and see the same people and see how things change and what doesn't change. And some of the most beautiful parts of South Australia haven't changed much. One of those for me is actually the beach at Port Wollonga. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be on, on a short list. But the, uh, the second one, for me, one of, the, one of the wonderful things about travel and traveling over a lifetime has been being able to put the pieces together. For example, when I was in China as ambassador for four and a half years, I travelled to all 31 of China's provinces across this vast country, even bigger than our own, but just as diverse. And of course, there is something to be said. You mentioned the coast, the, the far north, the desert, the, the Flinders Ranges. We've all got our favourite parts. But what I'm really looking forward to doing over the next five years is, if you like, putting all of those pieces together. Mm -hmm. And a number of friends have got me interested in the Heysen Trail. Mm -hmm. Now there's a bit of a question, can I find enough free weekends to be able to walk 1,200 kilometres <laughs> from the Flinders Ranges all the way down to, to Cape Jervis? But, and I don't know the answer to that, I hope there will be. I've always had an interest in, in borders and South Australia's borders are, are pretty interesting as well too. So there's a lot that I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. I tell you one place that I visited, uh, first really official visit as governor though, was Wyala. And Rod and I are very keen to go back there in April because the mayor and all of her colleagues, Mayor, mayor Claire McLaughlin, 
uh, really sold us on this idea of swimming with cuttlefish, ah. which we're very keen to do. It can mm -hmm. be done in April. And I know one of the things that you do is you, you um, recommend when are the best times to visit various places. So it's not just the place, it's the time and it's the experience. So if you're going to force me to give a second place, I will say Wyala <laughs> because I want to go back in April and yeah. swim with those cuttlefish. Mm, that's fantastic. And you mentioned about the time of uh, time mm. of year you visit. The places, the same places seem to change in each yeah. four of the seasons. And, and the, the virtually summer versus winter can be very worlds mm. apart. And uh, yeah, and I think mm. that's what's so great about South Australia. Technology, um, mm. Your Excellency, it's a fantastic means of uh, communicating with each other from across the globe, mm. uh, from keeping ourselves entertained while waiting for a bus. Um, but unfortunately, there can be some, some negatives that are associated with technology. Um, you know, some young people are spending upwards of eight hours a day on their mobile mm. phones. What do you think we need to be doing to mm. encourage young people to have a good balance of on-screen time and off-screen time? Mm. Look, it's a very good question, Ethan, and uh, look, you're speaking to someone who's not only a governor but a parent, a parent of four adult children between the ages of 20 and 30, and we've probably been grappling with this issue for, I would say, close on 20 years mm -hmm. as those early devices were introduced and, of course, then became accessible to young people in a, in a less controlled way, perhaps, than, than originally. But of course they do provide, including during times of a global pandemic and indeed any time, sort of massive opportunities, if you like, to explore the world uh, through that device. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not uh, down on them, if I can put them that way. I, I put it that way. I do think there is a place for balance, though. That balance really needs to be determined uh, in a personal way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and We've spoken before about the uh, travel opportunities, the sorts of things that you do, your programs. People can engage in quite a lot of research and can be educated. There's masses of amount of wonderful material, even about South Australia and mm -hmm. the places that people might visit. But I suppose there's that question about living life vicariously versus living your own life in, in reality. Mm -hmm. and, and I do need to acknowledge here because our eldest daughters are partly involved in promoting e-sports mm. in, in a role that she has in the United Kingdom. And she's really got me to understand uh, the tremendous benefits that e-sports can bring, including for people who have mental health challenges or who are otherwise unable to you know, exercise in the ways we might traditionally think of. So I see, the, I see couch time, if you want to call mm. it that, <laughs> as enabling but ideally to be balanced with experiences of real life and connections to complement those very important ones that are, that are made online. Mm. So I, I think, you know, you think of me as a, um, not uncritical, but, but uh, not overly critical either. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, what we're looking to do though, I think it must be my grandmother who said everything in moderation. I think mm -hmm. the same, you know, goes to your, online diet as it does to your actual diet. Mm, yes, yes, and I couldn't agree more. And you, you bring up about technology has mm. this great uses, you know, f for instance, with myself, if it wasn't for technology, I wouldn't yeah. be able to produce this program. Um, for yourself, you know, I'm, you know, I'm aware you have an Instagram account now and you're, yeah. you're educating the people of South Australia, mm. and I guess in particular, a younger generation through social yeah. media um, with the governor's role, which in the past hasn't been able to be done before. No, it hasn't. And, you know, at, at Governor South Australia, if I, if I can say that, but is a way in which we're seeking to, yes, educate, but also connect with uh, the community and show our support for the community. And particularly, actually, at a time like this, I think for, for young people who are volunteering, supporting their own communities, we want them to feel encouraged and as if, as if their efforts are appreciated, just as volunteers throughout the whole community should be appreciated also. I, your message about that moderation mm. and depending on what you're doing online is, is fantastic. Yeah. But to the young people that might be addicted potentially yeah. to video games and that are yeah. spending an unhealthy amount of time yeah. on the couch, mm. what would you say to those young people? Look again, I mean, these are conversations not so much from me to them, but, but for them just to think about themselves is 
you know, th there is a difference between online and reality. Uh, there are many opportunities to do things. Sometimes I think just getting started, just getting you know, off the couch as you put it, uh, is the hard thing. And, and obviously there are a tremendous number of options, things, things to do. I mean, even just walking outside and getting some sunshine, breathing in that fresh air, exercising in whatever form. I think at the beginning of the year, we're all conscious of it, and New Year's resolutions yeah. abound. But in South Australia, it's just so easy that, that we, we don't appreciate necessarily just the value of clean air and uh, all of the various things that don't cost a great deal of money or indeed don't cost anything uh, as a way of just complementing the, uh, the game life, mm -hmm. if you like. And I also think, you know, there are times in one's life when one can throw one's energies into something and, and let's face it, some of our gamers are going to make their careers mm -hmm. in gaming because they love it and they're good at it and there's a role for all of that. And I would always encourage young people to pursue uh, this combination of what they love and what they're good at, mm -hmm. but to try a variety of things because I think there have never been more opportunities for young people uh, once they leave school or even during school. And I think exploring those things, ensuring that uh, there's variety, again, these old sayings, variety is the spice of life. Um, <laughs> but, you know, perhaps there's a role for friends and family to encourage. Sometimes people just need a little bit of encouragement mm -hmm. to take that first step. And once they take it, they find that, you know, one step leads to another, leads to another, and to interesting careers and different parts of the state, mm. the nation, and potentially, as my own experience shows, the world. The young people in South Australia that are already getting off the couch per yes. se, there are so many young people that are doing great things, whether yeah. it's um, getting involved in their local community, yep. starting their own business, uh, volunteering at a local organisation. Yes. What would you say to those young people that are, that are trying already to make a difference yeah. and are making a difference yeah. within their community? Yeah. Well, I'd congratulate them, obviously. I'd thank them because it's not always easy to do what they're doing. I know that many of them, do, though, get a, a tremendous amount of encouragement and satisfaction from the, from the feedback that they, they get. And, mm -hmm. of course, sport is one of them. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting a number of young, young South Australians who are you know, not necessarily in the League of Olympians, not necessarily competing in state championships, but have loved playing whatever sport it is and are now giving back through coaching or refereeing or playing in a range of, of different leagues, encouraging uh, young people who may have uh, a range of abilities to, to uh, get exercise and, and uh, pleasure from sport. Mm. So uh, part of my role is acting as a patron for a number of, a large number actually, of community organisations. And I already I have met and actually been able to give awards to young people who've been doing amazing work. And, and regularly I hear across the community what a privilege it is for perhaps older South Australians to, to see what the younger ones are doing and how they can connect with their peers and create opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think what I also see uh, amongst older South Australians is many of them started volunteering when they were very young. Mm -hmm. And one thing has led to another and they're contributing to a sense of community you know, in their immediate environment and sometimes more broadly. And actually social media is one way that they're often able successfully to connect. But I think in every case, what I see is someone who's proud of what they're doing, enthusiastic about it, can see the benefits. And I think there is something about the quality of giving and then receiving that is worth us all thinking about. There's plenty of young South Australians that might be thinking about something. They've mm. got an idea they want to put into yeah. action. Uh, yeah. they, they're thinking about, they, they want yeah. to help out. What would be your advice to these young South Australians? Mm. I, my advice would be to, to stick with it. Of course, there are a range of um, slogans around this. Just do it, I think, is a, is a pretty good one as well. Stick with it. But I think also sometimes people find it hard to take that first step. 
uh, and finding a willing partner uh, in their own age group or someone who's a little bit older and can advise is a really key thing, I think. Mm -hmm. There's nothing quite like a wise head along the way or, or a, someone who can um, help you with suggestions. We talk a lot about mentoring and sponsorship. It doesn't have to be a formal arrangement, but just seeking advice. And of course, there are organisations, Volunteers SA, for example, who will connect people with, uh, with organisations who are looking for volunteers. And some people only have a limited amount of time to spare, but there is a very wide range of options indeed. Mm. And I had some insight into those in the period before Christmas with uh, the Hutt Street Centre, with uh, Fred's Van, uh, with Food Bank and with a range of others. So, but one of the striking things also is many parts of Country SA mm. have local organisations, local charities, really homegrown that are doing wonderful work and there's always a place for volunteers in those organisations. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, fantastic advice that uh, those young South Australians watching um, mm. will take on board. What would be your message to young South Australians and their families on mm. why they should get off the couch mm -hmm. and uh, go out and see and experience all the amazing places that our great state has on offer. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can use the word and the term <laughs> off the couch, you get extra brownie points. So no, I think I've said <laughs> off the couch I mean, about four times already. So I hope up. my brownie points are going quite well. But, but look, I think there is another world off the couch and that world is to be explored. It doesn't all have to be done at once, but it would be a pity, I think, you know, uh, there, there are some great games out there in real life, is what I'd say, and uh, off the couch is definitely the best place to discover those. They can be complemented by what you do on the couch. Mm. It's not a question of getting off the couch forever and never going back again, but on and off is a pretty good way to mix it up. Mm. No, I think that's, and moderation is key. And you know, mm. we're not sitting down on a couch, but we are sitting down on the chair today. Mm. So I, I didn't think we should sit on the lounge <laughs> because I thought that might be a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it would have been, it would have been. You've got to practice what you preach. Right? Exactly right, exactly <laughs> right. Well, ma'am, just before we finish up, um, a few days ago, I actually asked, um, the community of Off the Catcher Ethan mm -hmm. on social media, whether mm -hmm. they had any questions they mm -hmm. would like to ask you. So sure. I've got a few questions. Would it be By okay means, if I, yes. So they hit, some hit uh, some serious issues, some mm. are probably more serious. This is probably one yeah. of the biggest ones. Your Excellency, Adelaide Crows or Port Adelaide? Ah, yes. No, I've, <laughs> I've, I recognise that at least half your, uh, your <laughs> those who are involved in this will be disappointed by my answer. The answer is, <laughs> For me, the crows. Oh, yes. Uh, for my husband, it's Port Power. Oh. Uh, the rest of the family is deeply divided, but we are used to intra-family sporting rivalry and we're looking forward to the season. <laughs> That's fantastic. I think you and I are going to get along even better now, Your Excellency. <laughs> okay. No, thank you. Um, what would you like, what do you do in your spare time if you have any spare time? Mm. Well, look, one of the things I'm doing at the moment really is just exploring parts of Adelaide and beyond and we want to carve out some time to be able to travel perhaps one weekend a month just for fun, just mm -hmm. us, not, not officially. So that's part of what I'm doing because I knew a lot of these places as I was growing up, I want to rediscover them again. So that's, that's probably the main thing I'm doing but like everybody else I'm keeping in touch with, with family during COVID and that means quite a lot of FaceTime as well and WhatsApp and various mm -hmm. various other things. Yeah. But uh, the other thing is I'm invited to lots, lots of events, lots of opportunities, and I'm keen to take advantage of as much of those as possible mm. and meet as many South Australians, including young South Australians, as I can. And what I would say to those of your, what do you call them, fans, followers, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure to be honest. Yeah, right. uh, well, yeah. well, viewers of yes. um, uh, Off the Couch with Ethan, that if we should find ourselves off the couch anywhere together, please come up and say hello, introduce yourselves, tell me what it is that's got you off the couch. Mm, that's fantastic. And got there we go. There's a, off the couch. <laughs> there's an open invitation to there meet is. Your Excellency if you see her. Uh, yeah, there, there we is. go. Open invitation. <laughs> um, we have another question here. What is the most challenging part of your role? Mm. Um, 
I wouldn't say the most challenging necessarily, but the part that I take very seriously is my role presiding over Executive Council. Mm -hmm. Those meetings are held uh, once a week. The Premier's in attendance, uh, at least one other minister, often the whole Cabinet. And my preparation for those meetings, uh, providing royal assent to uh, laws which have gone through the Parliament, been passed by both Houses, uh, the regulations that come into play with those uh, proclamations attached to them. That's quite a serious business. I always make sure that I do that thoroughly. That's what the people of South Australia deserve from their, from their institutions, from a democratic system like ours, in which I have a small role to play, but that I take very seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the, uh, the kitchen at Government House can, uh, can whip up whatever you really request as Governor, which rightly so, you have, uh, this position is rightly earned. Um, but if you had to, if you could eat anything on the planet, mm. maybe as your last meal, what would be, your, what would be <laughs> that meal? What would be your favourite food? Oh, goodness <laughs> me. Well, look, uh, it's true that the, the kitchen is, uh, that we have some very skilled chefs, and it's also true that in the course of a year, they provide something close to 10,000 meals, morning teas, afternoon teas, uh, things to go with reception. So they're very, very busy mm -hmm. and they are wonderful. Uh, but I don't think there's anything that quite beats King George White. Oh, yeah. That's so amazing. that would be my answer to that question. <laughs> that's fantastic. Very easy to cook as well. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's great. I think we find sometimes uh, the, the food we love the most is sometimes the more simple food. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Yes, and yeah. close to home. E exactly, exactly yeah. right. Um, and finally, ma'am, um, a question here that was asked, uh, what's the most rewarding part of your role as governor? Oh, oh meeting South Australians. No, hands down, absolutely hands down. And not just meeting to say hello to, and often there's not a lot of time, but you can have quite meaningful, interesting conversations with people. And a conversation, of course, is not just about talking. We're both speaking quite a lot today, but listening. Mm -hmm. Listening to what they've got to say, to their experiences, to their hopes for the future, uh, their views on opportunity, uh, and those conversations, absolutely best had. Mm -hmm off the couch. <laughs> well, Your Excellency, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, and an honour speaking with you today. I hope and I'm sure that uh, plenty of young South Australians watching this um, will be looking up to you today and they will be taking on board the advice you've provided them. Um, and I would just like to say on a personal note, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you. Um, you know, I, it, it is a great honour um, to be able to speak with you and I, I'm sure that um, like many young people, if you, if you see Her Excellency around South Australia to come up and say mm. hi, but, uh, but for now, Your Excellency, thank you very much for your time. Great pleasure, Ethan, and all the very best to you in your career, film, travel, off the couch, all of it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bev, thank you. Well, there you have it. There's a message from none other than South Australia's governor. To the young people already getting off the couch, congratulations. You guys are doing a fantastic job in your community. Keep at it. And to those that are thinking about getting off the couch or getting out and being involved in your community, the governor's message is to find someone to help you. Latch onto them as a mentor, and then who knows what you'll be able to achieve. So for now, it's your turn to get off the couch and make a positive difference in your local community. Whether it's joining a local sporting club, whether it's volunteering in an organisation, or putting an idea into place that you've always wanted to do, now is the time for you as the young people of South Australia to get off the couch. Best of luck and I cannot wait to hear how you go.